hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world this might find you today. Welcome and thanks so much for joining us on today's webinar. I'm your host, Nicole Jones of TechSoup, and today we're talking about how nonprofits can go digital and stay digital with Acrobat Pro DC. All right, so as we're getting settled in here, I'd love it if you could share in the chat where you're joining in from and your superpower. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm tuning in from Oakland, Oakland, California, and my superpower is resiliency. Okay, so go ahead. Add yours in the chat. We'll read out some of those as we progress through our intro. All right, so I'm so glad you're here with us today, and I'm going to cover a little bit of housekeeping here. So all lines are muted, but you can ask questions at any time by typing them into the Q&A panel of the webinar, and we will stop about halfway through to um, take some of those questions, so do, do share them as they come in. And if you lose internet connection, no problem. You can just reconnect using the link that was emailed to you. And lastly, you'll receive an email with this presentation, recording, and links so you can go back and watch anything that you might have missed and also share this content with others. And I'm seeing some responses come in chat. And we have Jeffrey from Columbia, Missouri, and he says the superpower is putting out fires. We have Ellen from Cleveland, Ohio, and her superpower is power of positivity. We have... Um, someone joining in from Los Angeles and their superpower is tenacity. I like that one. And we also have Wendy from Brooklyn, New York, saying her superpower is tenacity. So there you go, superpower twins. Uh, we've got David from Montana, multitasking. Yes, I relate to that. Luke from Whitestone, Virginia, leadership. And I'm seeing, I'm just going to read out some other superpowers. Um, creative troubleshooting, pushing positive change. Non-stoppable. These are great. We've got some serious superheroes in this webinar with us today, and we are delighted to have you. All right. So there's going to be lots of other ways to stay engaged and connect with us and one of you know each of you in the chat today. So first of all, asking questions in the Q&A section. We will be taking some of those questions halfway, and then at the end and throughout, we'll be answering them via the Q&A panel. And we don't have any poll questions today, so we're going to skip that one. But you can tweet at us at TechSoup and use the hashtag TSWebinar. And, of course, the audience chat where so many of you had added your superpower responses, um, that's another great place to listen to conversations from other nonprofits. Okay. Now with that covered, a little bit about TechSoup. So TechSoup is a global network bridging tech solutions and services for good. So what does that mean? Well, you might know TechSoup for its software program, but we're so much more than that. We also provide support, training, community, and much more to help over 1 million nonprofits and more than 200 countries and territories. And we absolutely love being your resource partner. And that's, oops, skipping ahead there. And that's made possible thanks to the 100 plus corporate donors and providers of software, hardware, and services who have chosen the TechSoup platform to create and grow impactful in-kind donation programs. And you can check out all of our great offerings in our catalog from our partners by visiting our nonprofit tech marketplace at techsoup.org slash get hyphen product hyphen donations. And Stephen on our team is going to be adding that link to the chat along with other links throughout this presentation. So do stay tuned for audience chat, but we're also going to email you this link and you'll get the slides as I mentioned. So you'll have that handy in your inbox within the next day or two. Okay, so before we get to our presenter and today's content, I just want to make sure that you know about this special resource page at TechSoup.org. It's for nonprofits impacted by COVID-19. So as I've mentioned, TechSoup is committed to equipping your nonprofit with the tech resources you need to meet your mission. And that's why we've compiled these resources. And it includes tools to support remote work, 
webinars like this one today, right, about going from paper-based paper -based to digital solutions, um, also related blog posts, free courses from TechSoup, and more. And we're always updating this page with new resources, so it's a great one to share. And we'll make sure we include that link in the audience chat. And of course, um, you'll get the, the slides with this link as well after the webinar. And with that, on to introductions. Once again, I'm Nicole Jones at TechSoup, and I'm joined by Stephen Davidson, who's going to be assisting our chat. And on today's webinar, we're joined by Lori DeFurio. She's retention and customer engagement, who leads, I should say, retention and customer engagement at Adobe. And as group manager, she drives the retention and customer engagement marketing strategy for enterprise customers who use Adobe Document Cloud, including Acrobat DC, Adobe Sign, and the associated mobile apps. And prior to her current role, she was a group manager at Adobe, driving the social media strategy for the Adobe Document Cloud business worldwide. And we're so thrilled to have her here with us today. Welcome, Lori, and I will hand it off to you. Thank you, Nicole, and good morning, good afternoon, wherever you might be in the world today. I really thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to have listened to me talk about Acrobat and its mobile apps. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Let me just go back, run over there, and share my screen. And Nicole, just let me know when you can see the slides. Will do. And so I should just remind people, let's see, um, you might have to go over to this tab if you're not seeing your those screen share pop-up. There is a tab that says Live Screen Share. Okay. And we can are playing it now. Perfect. I'm checking Great. It's loading. Yep, we can see it. We're in business. Awesome. Great. So again, I'm, uh, as Nicole mentioned, my name is Lori, and I've had the pleasure to be working on the Acrobat product line for over 20 years. I mean, I absolutely live and breathe Acrobat and Adobe. <laughs> so what I want to talk about today, digital. Let's, let's, let's just get into the digital world and then stay digital. And I feel like it's a very interesting topic because, you know, in this um, – situation pandemic that we're in, we might not have access to a printer that we had before. We might not have access to some of the things. So let's try to get as much stuff into the digital world and then just stay there if we can. So here's what I'm going to go through today. I'm, I'm going to talk about working on any device. I'm going to work on my mobile phone, and then I'm going to work on the desktop, and I'm going to show you guys both and how, how really it's, it looks very similar and the things that you can do. I'm going to leverage a couple of mobile apps, Adobe Scan and Adobe Acrobat Reader, to help us to go digital. And then we're going to stay digital, and we're going to talk about make, taking PDFs and converting them back to Office formats. I'm going to talk about signing and collecting signatures. And then last but not least, I'm going to talk about integrating your Acrobat with either Google Drive or the Microsoft Office 365 suite, whatever it is that you're working with. So I want to make sure I want to show you people, show everybody what's what's going on. So again, what am I going to do today? On my desktop, I'm using Acrobat Pro DC, um, which I know is available uh, to all of you from TechSoup. And then on my mobile device, I'm going to be using Adobe Acrobat Reader and Adobe Scan. And both of these are free. If you haven't downloaded them already, I really would encourage you to go um, use them because they work in conjunction with your Acrobat Pro that you have on your computer. So with that being said, let's just jump into what I wanted to cover today. So the first thing I wanted to mention was you can really work across any device with the Document Cloud and the Acrobat um, suite. So first off, we all know about Acrobat on the desktop. But also, you may or may not be aware, if you go to documentcloud.adobe.com, I'll go over there in a moment, you'll have access to all your PDF services, all your documents from within a browser on any device, or if you're over at some friend's house and you're like, oh, i got to get this thing, you don't have your laptop, you don't have it, just you can jump right in there and see that. And then, of course, the mobile apps have the similar user interface, and so there's this synergy across the platforms. So they have the same look and feel, same tools, and same everything. So with that being said, let me show you. Now, you might be thinking I'm in PowerPoint doing slides, but I'm not. I'm actually in Acrobat Pro DC because I like to present from in here. I convert my PowerPoint to PDF to make it easier to be portable. And again, as I mentioned, it's on every device I'm on. So I'm here in the desktop 
One of the things that's rather new, you may or may not be aware of, is there's a little star here. And that allows you to star the file that this is one of my favorites. And when you do that, I'm just going to do it. You'll notice see the little cloud here next to this. When I click on that, it's actually going to copy it into my document cloud. So then if I'm on mobile, I'm in the browser, wherever I am, the slides that I'm showing you today are immediately available to me. Let's go ahead and jump over to the browser. And I didn't bring this up yet, but I'll do it right here. So I'm going to go to documentcloud.adobe.com. Oops, I've got to sign in. I, um, I was me, but then I wasn't me. And sometimes I have to be me twice. So just give it a moment here. I'm probably going to have to use our um, SSO that we use here at Adobe. We use Okta to have it bring up um, my uh, environment. Just take a moment. And what you see here is you've got, you know, again, you're back in Acrobat. You've got your home, your documents. You've got all the words that you see in Acrobat, things like conversion or editing or sharing. If I click on my documents and I click on my starred documents and I say sort them not by name but by the date I modified them, we should see date open, date added. There's our deck that we just added a moment ago. It's just right here and it's start. So it's right there for me on any device wherever I am. And if I need to, I can share it with others right from here. So that's kind of a really cool thing that you can do on the desktop either from your Acrobat environment or from the browser. Okay. With that being said, I want to talk about going digital. I'm going to go jump back into full screen mode here. It's Control L, Command L on a Mac to jump from you know, the seeing all the Acrobat tools into going digital. And I'm going to talk about Adobe Scan and Adobe Acrobat Reader mobile apps. Now, um, up until I think about two days ago, well, you can see I did I pulled the first screenshot on the 16th and I pulled the second one this morning. These, this is what the icons used to look like, and now we've updated our icons. So if you've downloaded these apps, and you haven't updated to the latest version, you may still see Adobe Scan and Acrobat looking like this. They look pretty similar. It's just a little redder. Otherwise, if you've downloaded them like this morning, they'll both look like um, the little trefoil, but one with kind of a teal background and one with a red background. And I'm going to jump into those in a moment. But I wanted to just show you quickly, you know, for Adobe Scan, you have all your documents. You can share them. You can comment on them. When you're in Reader Mobile, you have words like comment, fill and sign, editing, all sorts of things you can just do in the mobile world. I'm on the go, I'm not at my desk, and I want to get as much done as I can that I don't need to be, you know, kind of uh, at my desktop. So with that being said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump out of full screen mode, and I'm going to jump over here and see if this is still connected. It doesn't look like it is, so just give me one moment. This happens every once in a while. Um, I'm actually sharing my phone with you guys um, uh, through this, there we go, and there we go. Hang on, let me get out of all my apps over to here. So here's what I have, and I'm going to turn the phone sideways, maybe. All right, we'll wait till we get into the app to show you how these both work. So let me go ahead and just collapse everything here so we've got kind of a clean background. All right, first and foremost, what I'm going to do is I have a couple of documents that I printed out earlier um, just so I had something to work with. And so I'm going to open Adobe Scan, and I'm going to say go ahead and create a new scan. Now, I don't know if you've ever used this. This Sorry, it's my desk, my pop, my things that I'm doing here. I can actually hold the phone up. Let me do it this way. Hold the phone up here, and it will. Those four little blue dots will find the edges, and I can just I can clean it up right now if I want. See how it kind of missed that edge there, or I can do it later. But I'll just say continue. I have another page here that I uh, printed out another thing, and I'm going to actually do this one this way, which is easier for me to do. And again, it captures the edges for me, and I'll say confirm. And now I have a two-page document. Let's get to it. It's not tipping over. I don't know why the phone's not tipping over. Sorry, guys. 
I have a two-page document now. Here it is. There's page one and there's page two. Well, wait a minute. Page two is um, not the right way. And if you notice, there's a whole slew of two tools here at the bottom. I can add another page. And I could take another photo or I could go from the photos that I've taken, you know, with my phone, my, uh, phone camera. And Acrobat is smart enough, Adobe Scan, excuse me, is smart enough that it says, well, I don't think you want pictures of your family in here or your friends. Why don't I show you all the documents that you've scanned, anything that you scanned that had words in it, because that might be something that you want to include, like maybe I'll grab this receipt or something and say, okay, so now I have this three-page file that's all very text-ish, if you will. Um, there's other tool here, reorder. I can drag and drop these into different orders if I want to do that. The next tool over is crop, as you can imagine how crop works. The next tool is rotate. Well, I'm going to need to rotate this one, so I'll rotate it to get it the way I want it. The next one is about coloring it up. Do you want it other color, make it grayscale, and so on. But a brand new tool that's just been added just recently is the cleanup tool. And I love this tool because, for example, see how there's that little blue piece there? I could crop it or I can literally just hold my finger down. Let me see if I can get this to do it. I did it this morning. And drag that over there. And it should turn the blue to white. What am I doing wrong? Fill with the selected color. Maybe I'll do that instead. And I'll pick the color would be white. I'm getting to pink here, sorry. And I can actually do that, and it will, as I click on this, see it should just, oh, it's filling in with pink now. I didn't quite do that right. So, of course, what am I going to do here? I'm probably going to undo because I made a mistake. But it allows you to do cleanup if you need to clean up as well. So now I have this three-page document. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is probably give it a name because by default it gives us this name at the top scan, June 25th, and I'll just click on this. Now the other thing it does is it starts, allows you to rename it any way you want, but it starts giving you different clues of things like do you want to call it about volunteering because it found those words in the document. And I'll just call this Tech Soup, uh, whoops, Soup um, 01. We'll just call it 01 for now, right? I'll say OK. Now I'm going to click Save PDF in the upper right-hand corner. And what I want you to think about is I took paper, to pixels, and now these pixels are going to be converted to words in a PDF. Because what we're doing is we're, we're sending it up to Document Cloud. It's going to use optical character recognition to find the words and the text in this file. And so what I'm going to do is there's our brand new file that we just created. I'm going to click on the Acrobat icon here. I could click Share or Comment or all these other things, but I'm going to click the Acrobat icon. And it's going to open this file that we just scanned in inside of Adobe Reader Mobile. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I want to show you guys something. I turned off my notifications. I apologize, guys. I thought I did anyways. Um, look at this. This is live text now. It's, I basically converted the paper, and now I've gone, I went go digital, and now I'm in the digital world. I can copy this. I could highlight the text if I wanted. I can... Um, Click on, you'll see this little pencil here in the lower right-hand corner. I could add comments. I could go ahead and add like this, the, the, the sticky note tool and go ahead and add a sticky note here and say check this out. Whatever I want to do, I can do these all these things directly on mobile. I've never actually had to leave the environment once I've gone paper to pixels to words. Now, another thing I wanted to show you while we're here on mobile, before I jump back to desktop to continue the conversation, is if I go back to um, my home screen here, this says, Welcome back, Lori. You can see my starred files are there, like we talked about earlier, right? They're just here on mobile, just like they were on desktop. There's the slides. You see how there's the little cloud there? It's because right now they're only in document cloud. They're not on the local thing. So if I click on this, it will actually bring down the slides that I'm sharing with you guys today, right? Alternatively, I've got a form that somebody sent me. And I'm going to spend a little more time on desktop with fill and sign and talking about filling and signing, but I want to show you how simple it is to do on mobile as well. So here's a 501c3 donation receipt. And you can see, now this should work if I tip it over. There we go. I knew it would tip over when I got to here. 
you can see that if I go ahead and I start scrolling through this, it doesn't look like it's a fillable form. You can see there's no filling. But what I can do is click on the little blue pencil and say I want to do fill and sign. And so now as I start to click anywhere in the document, I could type in here, let me just click in the right place, on date, give me a second. I tip it back up this way. I'm sorry. I'm not clicking where I want to click. All right. Um, the name of the nonprofit. All right. I don't know what's going on here. I can have my name in there. I could put in different things that I've done before. I could add my EIN. I could just, I can do anything. I don't know why it's misbehaving here. I'm sorry. Um, I can go ahead and add the different fields. I could add in things like I could type Lori, I could type my address, I can make the font bigger, I can make the font smaller. Um, one of the other things you can do are different tools like check boxes or X's or different tools that you need. You know, I could add the check box. It even has what's called a comb field. And you might say, well, what do you mean by that, Lori? Well, I'll, I'll do it down here. I'll show you. A comb is when you have like one of those tax forms where you want to um, put in like um, maybe your social security number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it puts it in little boxes. And what I really want to do is just drag it to fit the area that I need. It lets you do that as well. Super cool. And then last but not least, it lets you sign. Now I have my signature in here already. There it is, you can see it, and I can grab that signature and drag it to wherever I want to sign on the page. For the folks that are on the call, you may have never done this before, and therefore you don't have a signature, so I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to go back to the signing, and I'm going to delete my signature. So what you'll see if you've never done this before is it'll say create your signature and create your initials. So when I go create signature, here are my options. I can draw, I'm on my phone, right? I've got my finger works fine. I can take an image, I could go grab um, my signature from within my, um, my photos. Or what's even cooler is I can take a picture with my camera right now. Um, I'm actually gonna do this with you guys, look at this. I can go ahead and write Lori like this on a piece of paper. And I can take a picture of that with a little scribble underneath it. And that becomes my signature. Do you see what I'm saying? So there you go, Lori's in there. That's my signature. So you can draw it on this if you're on a touch device like we are on our phone or that, and then that now becomes my signature that I place it anywhere I want on the page, right here in the signature area, make it a little bigger, make it a little smaller, and there's my Lori signature. So I just wanted to show you on mobile all the things that you could accomplish from going digital from paper to PDF from working within the PDF environment. If I get out of fill and sign here for a second and show you some of the other tools. Again, I mentioned there's comment, there's filling, there's editing. Um, even what you, the other thing you can do is from your home screen, if you click on the blue plus, you can do the scanning like we did. You can edit, you can create, you can bind. These are all the things you can do since you have Acrobat DC. The most important thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're logged in with the same ID. Acrobat and the mobile apps offer you, do you want to log in with your Google or your, uh, you know, your social logins or do you want to log in with your other one? You want to log in with the Adobe ID that matches what you've done on desktop so that everything is tied together. So Nicole, I'm about to shift off of uh, mobile and go back to the desktop. I just wondered if there were any questions that we can address while we're on mobile or demonstrate while we're on mobile. Nothing specifically tied to mobile, but I think this might be a good one uh, to, to answer now while we have it. It's a question from Eric, and he'd like to know, what is the security strength of the cloud service? We can answer that now or later, but yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. No, it's a great question. And we do have, I can put the link out, you know, when you send out the slides, we can send everybody the link to the Adobe's um, security, but it's, you know, it's, 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 I think it's 256 AES, if I'm not mistaken, but I want to double check that. But again, you know, everything is logged in, you know, you're logged in as you, and it's, it's going to be in your account. Now, you can share it with others, like I talked about that. I could open up these slides today. I could click on the share button, and I could go ahead and share, and I want to show you guys this. This is kind of cool. I can either share it with certain people. I 
think Nicole, um, let me see if I've got you in here. Um, is it N. Jones or something? At what? Yep, N. Jones at TechSoup. Okay. Okay, I thought it was, sorry. Okay, there you are. I can, um, oh. oh, sorry, wait a minute, i got to hit the. TechSoup.org, yeah. Oh, .org? Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Okay, so I can actually add this, and only person that can open this now is Lori and Nicole, okay? I can decide if I want to allow her to be able to add comments on it, just like have a commenting workflow with this or not. Or I could get a link, just get a link, and that means anybody that I can send the link to can get to this file. Or I could just share a copy and it'll open up, you know, your email or whatever you're going to do and send it to people. So there is, you know, the security of your stuff is up there. And if we need to know the exact thing, let's, um, Nicole, let's send out the link with um, the, the security uh, page from Adobe.com. Will okay. do. All right. Other questions about mobile before I jump back to the desktop? Another question, but we can wait until the end. So I'd say okay. jump ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going ahead. So I'm going to um, jump back into Acrobat, and we'll, won't worry about my phone. I'll put my keyboard back up here. All right. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was first we started with Go Digital. I want to stay digital now, right? I want to stay in the digital world. I'm sure every one of us has had a situation where somebody emailed us something and they said, hey, print this out, uh, fill it out, sign it, and get it back to me, fax it back to me, or get it back to me. And you're like, oh, my goodness, I started a digital. I had to go back to analog paper, and now I've got to get it back digital. So how can we just stay digital all the time? No matter what, whether somebody's asking me for feedback, somebody's asking me for uh, my signature, somebody's asking me to fill out a form, whatever, how do we stay digital? All right, so there's two tools I'm going to use in Acrobat today for this next section. I'm going to talk about converting PDF back to other formats, so if I need to reuse the text and graphics, that's the export PDF tool. And then I'm going to spend some time on fill and sign, talking about how do, we did it on mobile a little bit, but how do we do it on desktop? How do we sign ourselves when I need to do something because somebody sent me something? And how do I request signatures from others? And so we'll do a whole section on that now. All right, so first you might have noticed, or maybe not, but I'll talk about it now, the user interface of Acrobat um, DC. There's basically a home tab and a tools tab, and then there's any open files that you have. Now you'll notice over here on my tools on the right, I don't really have a lot there. And you might look at your screen and say, wait a minute, I have a lot more than Lori has. I customized these for today because I know I was going to talk about export and I'm going to talk about fill and sign. And I have a couple others there that I just use all the time. The way to do that, if you decide there's a tool that you use like every day, you can go to the tools menu and you can just um, grab the tool that you, get the tool that you want and you just click add. So create PDF, add. There, it's on my list to the right. And if I always do that, it's the most important thing I do every day, I'll just put it at the top of the list. If I don't really want it in there, I just hit the X and it's out. So that's an easy way to build this little list the way you want. However, another thing quickly I'll just talk about is, look at I've got these little tools up here because I do signing all the time and I do form work all the time. I can actually right click. I'm right clicking in this tool area and I say customize the quick tools. And then I can go to this menu and pick anything I want. So maybe um, I think I, I like I, maybe I want to say that I crop pages all the time, and I do that. Click crop pages, click the little plus, and boom, it's right there at the top. And now crop is right at my fingertips all day long. In addition to signing and other things, so you may want to think about doing quick tools here or editing the tools here to find the thing. Now. Again, you can see the crop isn't over here and the crop tool isn't here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to crop. Remember, you can click search tools here and it will search through all the tools that are available in Acrobat. And you can just click crop, boom, it opens the crop tool and we're ready to go. So just something to think about is that's just an option to search here or the search here in the tools tool if you're looking for something and you can't remember where it is. Okay, so let's talk about export PDF. So I'm going to jump over to this folder that I put together, 
And I showed you that um, that document, the two pages that I scanned in. This came from this uh, volunteer guide that I found on the Internet. It's about 40 pages long. I'm just going to flip through it quickly so you can kind of see it's a combination of a lot of stuff. And I'll jump back to page one. And I really need to reuse this, some, some parts of this other ways. So I could potentially just highlight the part that I want to reuse, right, like this, just grab this and right-click and say copy. That's easy. And then go paste it into Word or Excel or whatever. Um, I can also hold down the Alt key. And you'll notice how this changes from an I, from, it changes uh, from like to, to this little I-beam with a little square, and I can just highlight the little bit I want. Not that that makes much sense here, but it's that kind of thing if I just want to grab a piece of it. Or if I click on an, a, a graphic, let me see if I can do this right here. I should be able to highlight the whole graphic at a select tool and just get the whole graphic if I want to export that. But I want the whole thing. So I'm going to click on the Export PDF tool, and I can take this 40-page document and export it to Word or PowerPoint or Excel. I probably wouldn't do that, but I might say Word, and I'll just say Export. I'll put it back in the folder that we're working in today. And what's happening now is Acrobat is going in there and looking, is this a graphic? Is this text? What font is it? Um, it, really assessing the whole file. And I picked a larger file because I want to show you it's pretty quick, even if it's 40 pages long. And it's going to basically create a Word file out of what this PDF was so that I can reuse the parts of it. Just give it a second. It was a little quicker earlier today. There we go. Nicole, while I'm waiting, is there any question? Yeah, not specifically tied okay. to that, but I think we're in good shape. Good, good. Okay. All right, it's going to write this out. A lot of times when people do demos, they'll just use um, little demo files that are one or two pages long, but I wanted to show you this is real. All right, so here we go. Look at this. Uh, if I take the view down to one page at a time, I have the whole thing, all 40 pages, recreated, and it looks pretty darn close to the original. Sometimes Acrobat doesn't get it exactly perfect, but this looks pretty darn good. And um, now I could go ahead and use any parts of it I need if I needed that text or I needed that logo or whatever I want to do. So that's one way to do it. Now, the other thing to think about, though, is without using the full export PDF tool, because that will export the entire document for you. If I just need parts of the page, I could just highlight the parts and right-click and say copy. Or I can click Export Selection, which does the same thing. And then I can pick all the different file formats to export just the selection. And what it would do is then just convert that little bit to um, uh, Word to PDF. Now, if we go back to Home and I go to Scans, there's our TechSoup scan that we did a few minutes ago, even with the blue and even with the mess here. This is still live text, and I could do the same thing. I could go ahead and grab this and go ahead and say Export Selection As, or I could go ahead and say Export the PDF and export this whole thing to PDF, or maybe we could even export it to PowerPoint if we wanted the three slides. Um, my computer, TechSoup folder. And so again, it'll convert. I like to do a lot of PowerPoint because I'll get a PowerPoint from somebody and I don't have the native file. Excuse me, I'll get a PDF of a PowerPoint. And I will then bring it in here. And so it did this. It made it a little more vertical, but there it is. I just took all the pages and it made a three-page PowerPoint. So anything you can do anything with this and now it's just reusable to start doing other things. All right. Let's move on to signing and talking about signing things. So I have some more sample files, and I want to start with the one that we were just doing on mobile. I actually downloaded a PNG version, and I converted it to PDF. So if we look at this, um, uh, it's very similar here. Um, I can go ahead and click the fill and sign tool. And when you click fill and sign, it's going to ask you who needs to fill and sign this. Is it for me to fill it out or I do I need other people to fill it out? So let's start with the me side of things, which I sort of started on mobile. 
it says to me where. And now this is one of the things that it doesn't really do as well on mobile, but does better on desktop. Like you'll notice as I get close to here, see how it puts a little box that says, oh, yeah, I know something's going to go there. And I'll say today is June um, June 25th, 2020. Same thing here. I'll come down here, and I'll click, and I'll say the nonprofit is called Acme Widget. And, you know, mailing address and the EIN and different kind of things. I can fill all this out, donor name. I can put the dollars in here, $100 maybe. I could come down here and sign my name. Now, this didn't have any check boxes in it. I actually think I have a different example here. Did this one? Yeah, this one, see, like had check boxes in it and things like that. But again, remember, I want to review all the tools with you. You've got the text tool. You've got the X that you just put an X like you're checking something. You've got the check like you're going to check something. You've got the circle when it says circle, red, green, blue, whatever. You just grab that and. All as well. There's a line if you have to underline something, right, and just drag it to make the length that you need. And uh, then the bullet is kind of like to fill in a circle or whatever. But you have all those tools available to you. And again, as I mentioned, and I just want to do this again, when you're on the text tool, let me go back to the text tool, I can go ahead and do it like this where it just types, you know, oops, put my fingers in the right place, one, two, three, main, oops. Main Street, like that, and I could then stretch that to fit as much as I need or not if I had boxes. So let's talk about signing on the desktop. So again, not everybody has a touch screen, right? So if I click sign here, there's my initials and my name. I'm going to clear them out because I want to show you guys what you can do. And again, it says, do you want to type your name? And it gives me multiple styles. Do I want my name to look like this? Do I want my name to look like this? Is a sort of a signature. I can draw if I'm on, uh, I mean, I've got my mouse here, not very good job drawing. Or image, I can literally go look around on my computer, and one of the things that I did was I scanned in, where is it? Oh, I can't find it here. I've scanned in my, my um, signature, and I could do it that way, or take a picture like we saw on the phone. So I'm going to go back to typing my name and hit apply. And then again, just like before, I can just figure out where I'm going to put it on the page like that, resize it to, to, and, and relay it out where I want to do, and I'm done. I can click Next up here, and what it will do is it will, let's go ahead and save that, ask me do I want to get a link to this and send that back to the person that sent it to me and ask me to fill it out, do I want to send a copy through email, or Maybe this required two signatures, and so I signed it, and then my spouse signed it, or I signed it, and then the director of my division signed it, you know, in a, you know, whatever. And I could go ahead, and it will add a second signature to it as well. So that this is super easy, and it'll work in your Acrobat, whether it's just you signing or you plus somebody else. Now, let me start with a different document here. Give me a second. I'm going to go with. I think it's this one. Nope. Okay. This one I downloaded, and I just wanted to show you, this one is already fillable. Do you see how there's these blue areas? This was a form that somebody prepped so that I could just type here, 6 2020 I could say the grant name is Lori's New Grant. And I could say submitted it to Nicole, and so on like this. I could, this is already fillable, and I'll show you how people did that. Or I could go ahead and open something that's just like this document, this donation, simple donation, that's what it was called, simple donation. I could even open up the Word file and convert it to PDF if it's already Word. And I want to show you that really quickly. So I'm going to go into Acrobat. Actually, what I'm going to do is grab that Word file, and I'm just going to drag and drop it into Acrobat just like that. And it's going to literally convert it from Word to PDF. Okay. Now, again, there's no form fields on here, right? It's just I could just start, you know, doing things. So I want to go back to the Fill and Sign tool. And now when I click on it, I'm going to say I need other people to fill this out. It's not about me. It's about other people. So I'll say request a signature from others. 
And I'm going to request it from myself on my Gmail because I want to sort of show you what happens on the other end. And I'll just now it's asking me where does the person sign this? Again, it's going to be uploaded into the document cloud. Let's give it a moment. And it's going to ask me where do I want people to fill out. Now watch, as I roll over here, yes, I want somebody to put the date. I want somebody to put the organization name. I want somebody to put the street address and the city and the EIN. But I'm just going to grab that EIN and drag it across because I really want them to, it's one EIN across the whole thing. And I could keep going here. There's a checkbox here. Oops, change that. Let me delete that. Um, I'm just going to do a couple here and then the signature. And that's where the signature is going to go. There's a second exhibit here where I can do more stuff. And then I can just click send. Boom. And it's out the door. It's going to go to Lori at Gmail, and she's going to have to fill this out. So let me jump to the browser for a moment so you can see this. I'm going to go to my Gmail, which could be messy now. Hopefully that it'll be right there at the top. There it is. Lori requested a simple donation. I just say review and sign. And it opens it up. And it asks me, please fill out the fields, right? We had to fill out the date field. It's required. I have to fill out the org name, the street address, the city, um, and my EIN, and, and so on. And when I get down to the signature, it says click here to sign, and it offers me the opportunity let me clear that. To type my name again, like we saw on the desktop, draw my name, go pick a picture, or this is really cool. Now remember, this is the one I've sent to the person I want to sign. They can click mobile, type in their mobile number, and I think if the mobile's still sharing, I don't know if it is. I'm going to make the mobile share again. I want you guys to see this live. Quit that. And launched again. There we go. Okay, so here's my computer, um, my my excuse me, my cell phone. And I'm going to go ahead back here, and I'm going to say send it to this mobile device. And what you're going to see happen is there. I got a text on my phone. So I open the text on my phone, and it says Adobe Sign wants you to sign. I click that text. It tells me tip over my phone, and now I can write my name on the phone. And then I click done. Too bad, that's why I forget the word done. And look what happens. This is what's so cool is it wrote it right back into my PDF, my, my um, Adobe Sign that was on my computer. I click to sign and I'm done. I get a copy and you get a copy and it's all stored in the cloud for you. Nicole, I'm going to ask if there's any questions before I jump to the next topic because I just want to make sure while we're on signing if there's anything we need to talk about. Yeah, let's see. There was something specifically. Okay. Let me just pull that question back okay. up here. Okay, here's one question is from Shanice, um, and Shanice would like to know, when requesting a signature, if people do not have the pro version of Adobe, can they still sign with all options offered to them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and the answer is all they need is any device on the planet and an email address. Because when you're in here and you say, let me just go back and do this again, you say fill and sign request to others, and we go through that whole thing we did, as you saw, it just sent it to my Gmail account. It just, it, let me get back to my email here, where is that? It just sent it to my Gmail. And so all I have is a browser, maybe on my phone or on my computer, and I got an email, and that's all I need. So this, that's a really great question, because it's even the same for commenting and other things. It's like, you need Pro to kick off the process to request signatures, but the recipient only ever needs the, just the browser, uh, any device. I do it on mobile, I do it on the desktop, and an email because it's got to get to them. That's a great question. Awesome. Thanks for that question. Thanks for yeah. answering. So let's see. We've got, um, we've 
got a lot more questions kind of coming in on this. Uh, let's see. How about some forms require original signatures on several different places on a form. Can you change the signatures easily for the form? So if you need, um, I, I guess, so you're saying, I just want to verify that I need that same signature on multiple pages. It's just me all over again, Lori, on page one, page two, page three. Is that is that what the question is? It sounds like to change the signatures. I want yeah. it to be different on every page? That's why yeah, I'm reading this question. I could, but it's going to be a little bit crazy, I think. I'll just say this. So let me click on the signature, and we'll put this Lori one here. I guess what I could do is I could go to page two, and when I click on the signature, I would clear out my signature, and then I would maybe draw it. I'll just make some mess here. Sorry, guys. And then apply that one. And so on this page, it looks like this. But on the first page, it should still probably look like Lori. Let me get back to get out of this here. Go back to page one. And it looks like that. So if that's what you want to do, you could. But it's a little more work because you have to clear your signature and apply your signature, clear your signature, apply your signature. Alternatively, if you do have the one signature, you could just apply it to every page. But the other thing I would do, and I didn't really demonstrate this, but I'm going to do it right now since we're discussing this, is I would probably, if if it's a one-hit wonder for me, and I'm only going to fill out this form once, great, that's me. But if I'm going to make this form available to lots of people, I want – um, maybe, again, it's the donation receipt for my agency, and I want to be able to send it out to anybody. I don't want to make them have to kind of do it that way. I want it to be fillable like this with fields on it. And so what I would do is I would open it up. I'm just going to show you guys this. I would open it up in Acrobat. And, again, there's no fields here. You guys can see this, right? And instead of picking these tools, I'm going to pick a tool called Prepare Form. It's a pink tool. It's pink. And I'm going to say I want to make this into a fillable form with signatures, okay? So I can add the signatures first or after. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to say I want this file. And I want to show you what Acrobat's going to do. Watch this. It's going to – we'll just give it a new name, whatever. Boom. Look what it just did. It put all those fillable fields here for me. Tried to – now, again, it's not perfect, right, because it – thinks the EIN is broken up there. Maybe I do want to break it up, and if this is going to go into a database, I don't. You know, what's the donor's name, the dollars, you know, the check boxes are already there, things like this. It just absolutely easily gets me started. Missed here, didn't make that a signature per se. So then I would go to my tools, and I would grab my signature tool, and I would say this is where the signature goes, right? Oh, it did do a signature tool. Sorry about that. But the other thing I might say is, this is the signature. I double-click on this, and it says, what type of field is this? I'm going to say, this is the name of the signer. And this is the job title of the signer. And I'll show you how this looks on the other end, too. But I would prep the form in Acrobat first, because you all have Acrobat Pro DC. Make these fields the way you want. Um, you know, this one, dollars, let's double click on it and change it into, um, it's, it, well, it still is a text field, right? Like these things that you can do to make these smarter. I'm actually going to change it back to an Acrobat form for a minute. So if I click on dollars, I can say that this is formatted, I'm just going to jump ahead, guys, real quick, is a number with two digits. And so I'll go ahead and when I say close and I go preview and I type in here, I can't type any kind of letters. I can only type numbers. And um, and then I go like that. See, it, it can, it's a number. And it even puts the comma and everything in there for me. So I would prep it here and then I would say, um, I would make sure, whoops, sorry. I would make sure that it's a, um, you have to, there's this hammer and the wrench here. So you want to make sure that it's in Adobe Sign form. And then right from here, look, the word Adobe Sign just pops right up. Or I could open it and say, fill in the sign to others, grab this file, boom, ready to go. So that's what I would do. I would make it this way. So that's just something I wanted to share. I, especially if you're sharing it with others, try to make it fillable first because it's going to save them from making errors. Um, say there's a field that says state, like, you know, you've seen this in HTML forms where it drops down all the, the state codes. They aren't going to type in purple by mistake. Do you know what I mean? It's all you're trying to help your end user fill it out the best they can. 
Well, with that being mm-hmm. said, I'm going to jump. I just want I know we're a little sensitive to time. I want to jump back to the deck because yep. I didn't yep. show okay. you guys um, how to work where, you're, where you are. So I want to talk about an acrobat. What you do is you go to home. And over on the left side here, under Files, you can see My Computer and Document Cloud. Those are the defaults. But if you click on Add an Account, it brings up and it says, where do you store your files? Do you store them in Google Drive? Do you store them in OneDrive or SharePoint or Dropbox or Box? And all you have to do is click Add, log into your account over wherever you are, and then it's just there. I did that with my Google Drive earlier this morning. There's all my files on the Google Drive. I did it with the OneDrive in Microsoft. Give it a minute. There's all my files. And the cool thing is, is here's a PDF, right? I can just click on it right from here. It loads it in Acrobat. I could do whatever I want to do here. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to um, grab the, the, the sticky note and put a new sticky note on it. And then when I hit Save, see the little cloud is there? It just saves it straight back to SharePoint. I never had to copy it to my machine. Oh, gee, copy it here, work on it, copy it back. It's just connected now. It just, it just works from within Acrobat if you add the, the different kind of storage that you want. Alternatively, what if I work in Google Drive and I'm over in Google Drive? So I'm going to click on Google Drive, and here's my Google Drive, and these are all my files over on the Google Drive. If it's a PDF, I can go ahead and click on it, and then under the three little dots up here, I can say open with Acrobat for Google Drive. Boom, it's just going to open it for you. Even if it's a different thing, I could convert it. So it's going to open that file from Google Drive, Right in here, oh boy, I've got to be which person I am today. And there you go. I could go ahead and um, just work on this thing right from here. Boom, done. It's that easy. Same thing's true with, uh, let me jump back to Acrobat, was in the, the OneDrive or the SharePoint environment. I'm inside of SharePoint here. And you'll notice that under the three dots, there is, um, whoops, I've got to highlight a file first. If I pick a PDF, it says, um, the three little dots, Adobe Document Cloud, Organize Pages, Export PDF, like we did on the desktop. I want to convert that PDF back to Word or Excel or PowerPoint. I want to combine it. I can click on a Word file and click on the three dots, pick Adobe Document Cloud and say Create a PDF combine files, and if I hit two files at once, then the words get less. It only lets me combine, because clearly I've got two files selected. So this is super easy. Work work wherever you are. If you're in SharePoint and OneDrive, your Adobe Document Cloud tools are there. They're basically all of the f- verbs or, or f- tools from your Acrobat. Same thing's true in the, in the Google Drive. It'll take you right into here, and then from there I can decide, do I want to add sticky notes? Do I want to um, go ahead and edit it? I can edit it right from there, too, as well. So I can do everything with the Google Drive or with the OneDrive. And with that being said, Nicole, I know we're almost out of time. I'm I'm a very talkative person. There's my last slide. And um, I thought maybe we could answer some questions for a few minutes. Yes, let's do it. Thank you so much for that. We've got a lot of great questions. Uh, This is a really helpful tool and just to see your process of going, you know, between mobile and desktop of how it can function is very, very insightful. So thank you for that, Lori. And with that, let's see, just first question, uh, we had this come up, but I want to share it with everyone. And that is, what is the cost of this for nonprofits? So it's $12.99 per month for the first year, and there's a $0 admin fee through the end of the month. Um, so just in case that question comes up again. But, yeah, let's dive into some other questions here. So let's see. This one's from Allison. And Allison would like to know, can you send this to many participants? We have waivers, and we would like to send our participants. We would like to send to our participants and have signs. Like I know the answer okay. is that. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. So here's the deal. With Acrobat Pro DC, you, you can do one of two things. All right. You could say request signatures and add Lori and then add another Lori, right? And then what's going to happen here is um, this is going to require two signatures because it's going to, this one's going to have to sign and then this one's going to have to sign, right? If what you really want to do is 
have one document that you send out to 100 people, like in one shot, like it's called Mega Sign. You do need a full copy of Sign as opposed to the sign that's inside of Acrobit. But what you could do is, and it takes a little more time, but you could go ahead and send this one to Lori and send the next one to the next person and the next one and just just keep opening it up, just open it up in Acrobat and click fill and sign request signatures from others. Now, again, if it's two people, you want to make sure you add both their names here, that two people have to sign it, right? And then it'll go to this person first and this person second. I hope that answered the question. What's the next question, Nicole? Yeah, let's see. Next question we have here is from Gabriel. Gabriel would like to know, does the signer need to have Adobe Pro DC, or what are they using to sign on their phone? All they need is the phone and the email to get the to get it to you. That's all they need. There's no other software required, no other plugins, anything required for the person that's signing on their phone. That's all they've got to do. And in fact, I could go ahead, maybe, well, we're running out of time, but again, you guys should try this yourself. So you have Pro DC, you can download the mobile apps, you can, you know, you've got your phone, and you could send yourself an agreement, and then just open it in your email on your phone, and you'll see how simple it is. It's just fill it out, and since you can do finger on glass, you can sign right on your phone. We have it. All right, I know there's so many great questions here. We're going to do our best to follow up uh, offline with these. But why don't we take one more question here? This one's from Stephen. Stephen would like to know, can everything that you review today, Lori, be done on the desktop product? Yes, everything I did today can be done on desktop or mobile. And that's why I wanted to show you. Now, the only thing that's a little bit different from what I did today would be scanning, because you would probably then use a scanner or take a picture with your phone and then, send your email yourself the, the 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 picture and then bring the picture into acrobat and then you could continue to make it fillable or or, or, or be able to copy paste the text out or export the text but yeah everything that we've really taken the ad advantage of trying to say i want everything to work on the desktop and mobile as close as possible so that you know wherever you are and wherever you're comfortable working you have the same functionality excellent thanks so much Lori, and live screen share as we wrap up our presentation here. So yeah, thank you so much again for sharing this with us. And a note to everyone that you will get the replay of this webinar in addition to the slides sent to you via email the next day or two. And we are going to work to follow up with your questions offline here. So I know there's a lot we didn't get to, um, but we want to make sure we take note of those and appreciate your engagement today. So with that, we'll wrap with just some of our upcoming virtual events. Uh, so we have one, we have really kicked things off after 4th of July weekend here in the United States um, with a remote workforce communication plan for your nonprofit that's happening July 9th followed by expanding your online community with web accessibility. That's going to be a great one. And then we've got a TechSoup tour coming up as well uh, about mid-month on how to access donations, discounts, and services. So you can find all of that on our community and event page. It's at techsoup.org slash community hyphen events. And you can also check out all of our past webinars where you can see replays, slides, transcripts, and more. So with that, Lori, thank you so much. It was so great having you here today. Yes, thank you. And uh, everybody, if we will we'll definitely try to get those questions answers. And you can always find us over, you know, at Adobe. I'm there. Uh, I, we run a lot of webinar series. If you go look for the Acrobat webinars, we're happy to do more if you have more questions. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. And have a great rest of your day, evening, everyone. Stay safe, and we'll see you on another TechSoup live event soon. Bye-bye.